and the um, service, I think a new service, the Heal Hub. Um, so uh, we'll be welcomed by Kit and Laura from the service today. Uh, before we make a start, just a bit of housekeeping. So um, all of you have switched off their cameras and the mute that helps us with making sure that there's no internet um, difficulties and so you can hear and see us. So um, us as presenters will now and again when we're talking switch on our camera, I think it's always nice to have a face to a name um, or a face to a voice. Um, I'm Isabel van der Heeren, I'm the lead for transformation and I've been leading on this Meet and Connect sessions. So what we would like to ask from you at the end of uh, today's session is if you can give us some feedback, how you found it. Um, so there will be an email coming out straight after this session, which will give you access to the information Lauren Kit have covered today with you. So the whole PowerPoint will be there. Um, with um, the linkage to any other information, but also a link to an evaluation form. So if I can ask you just to fill that in, um, take a couple of minutes to fill it in straight away, that would be really helpful for us. Um, in terms of interacting with us today, you can do that via the chat. So while Kit and Laura do their presentation, you will be able to make comments or um, if you have any questions, put them into the chat box. I will keep an eye on that and I will direct them to Kit and Laura at the end of their presentation. Um, so yeah, so we're all ready to go, I think. So welcome Kit and Laura, and thank you for making some time uh, to talk about your very valuable service to young people in Warsaw. Over to you. Um, thank, yeah, thanks very much for uh, having us. Um, so my name's uh, Kit Shawande, I'm the director of Aspire for You. Um, we are speaking about a project that is essentially connecting young people with uh, therapists um, in relation to their challenges through COVID-19. Um, this is more of an early intervention piece, so it's not necessarily for young people that already have a, an established history or an experience with mental health services. This is more around young people that might have witnessed uh, a death, uh, witnessed some harm um, through uh, COVID-19, um, or even just young people that are going through challenges around uncertainty, et cetera. Um, just uh, yeah, around their futures. So um, Aspire for You is the overarching organization as a CIC. Aspire for You care about three things, mindset development, financial literacy, and employability. Um, and in a, in, a, in a different type of narrative, what we're really saying is that we think that if people can understand how their brains work more, uh, it's gonna help us to think straight through adversity Understanding money is also one of the challenges that we have to navigate in the modern world because money is our spears and arrows. So before we'd have to, you know, go and hunt and find our own food, now we've got to go to another place to earn something called money in order for us to eat. So understanding how money work is now money works is now an essential part of existence. Um, and the last part about employability for us isn't necessarily about having a job, but actually to employ something is to make use of it. So we think by understanding one's own mind understanding more about money, you can more or less find your place and your space and navigate what you need to do to, to find things that are a bit more fulfilling. Um, and for us, we've observed that in the education system that we don't spend enough time helping people understand how their brains work. So, you know, uh, we spend more time getting the grades, but we don't really work on the machine behind the grades. And then we wonder why, say, bankers can like rip off a whole nation and we can also run a country without being psychologically assessed. So we're really on a journey to start to develop and, and create experiences that help people uh, understand more about the machine that runs everything. Um, we've got a youth arm called Life Proof. So young people don't necessarily know or see the spy for you. They're more likely to engage with the brand Life Proof. Um, so in terms of myself, uh, my background is in... Uh, education and teaching and then I went on to uh, work around behavioral psychology um, over over the years of working in alternative provisions and schools that's where the journey and the realization around the the mind um, was established and we design experiences more than just workshops we try and put you in a position to experience whatever you've been learning about um, in order to introduce you to yourself. So you'll see a little bit more about how we do the experiential learning. Um, part of this intervention around connecting and young people with therapists also includes uh, our sort of principal therapist who uh, works with the NHS, Alison Trout, and she's helping to oversee 
the different types of expertise and, and therapists that are coming through this intervention. Um, it's worth noting that this intervention was a reaction to us listening to young people. And it's rather than seeing it as uh, another type of NHS intervention that has some necessary sort of like rules, safeguarding procedures, etc. This is a little bit more about what the public and the people would do if they had the means to support themselves. So this is really about those that are able to see and identify challenges in their homes or in themselves, but can't afford to have the help that they would have just done privately to have that little bridge. So whilst they're waiting for NHS services, this intervention is basically trying to help people at least commission their own support with our help. So we've done the money parts. Now we work with them to get some of the therapy help that they need. Part of that is about a diversity of therapy. So we've also got drama therapists, music therapists, and art therapists that are helping us to shape this um, intervention. Um, and again, young people have fed back that sometimes it's not just about talking, but they want to express themselves in different ways. So we're, we're trying to facilitate that diversity of experience, um, trying to get to uh, well-being, basically. So our context, um, part of what we do is have a shapers group where different ranges of young people help us to shape and steer a lot of what, what, what we do. But a lot of our interventions and workshops are actually got a lot of embedded listening in. So we're very good at diverse listening, creating experiences, creating things in schools, things for over 18s. But, you know, the spectrum of young people that some people might say is, you know, 16 to 25 or so. We, we develop a lot of programs that help us understand what they're going through and reshape things. And even once they're finished with the programs, we still maintain relationships with them. So a lot of, again, what, what spurred and designed this is from a, a, a long time of listening to young people who I met that when they were 14, they're now 28, 29 now. So I'm able to see where in their life histories and their life journeys, either things have gone very right or things have not gone as good as they should have done. And we, we then go back and reverse engineer programs to plug those gaps. Um, one of the things that we've been doing in Warsaw specifically is around youth networking. So remembering that we're experiential specialists, um, you know, we came from, or I came from a world where I was listening to young people needing and wanting certain skills. And we started showing them how to put on their own music events, their own um, talent experiences, and then more organizations started doing the talent stuff. So we were then, okay, well, let's show you how to make money from that. More organizations started doing that. So we then evolved into showing young people how to network more. So if you're a young musician, where do you meet um, you know, your producers, your graphic designers, uh, where do you meet somebody like maybe even a venue owner to put you on? So we just thought, well, there's a natural progression for young people to start being taught how to kind of collate and put their own interventions together in their communities um, and a lot of our networking events will have a monthly theme so we've looked at arts and mental health we've looked at how to get funding what's the difference between a manager a booker and an agent um, all of those things are really about getting young people life ready which is where the life the brand life proof comes what are the small things that people may not know or that go um, on, on under under appreciated that actually makes a difference and in our experiences by putting on these live music events and bringing on experts to do a talk and having a chance for young people to to showcase and express themselves we're really um, manifesting uh, arts for health so this is around social uh, social inclusion this is around showing young people that they can be each other's assets, not competition. And some of the young people in this image is actually from the youth offending service. So if we think about reparations, there's an argument to say that after somebody's finished painting things, et cetera, well, how do we get them ready for other types of um, social inclusion? So we tested with Warsaw Youth Offending whether this type of program would help uh, young people have something that looks good on their CV which is, yes, I went through the YOS, but actually I then created an asset for the community, et cetera. Um, and then in these conversations, we are desensitizing hot topics. So we are talking about mental health. We're talking about parents, how they make us feel and all of that kind of things in the sessions. This is all relevant to why the program is set up the way it's set up. So we also then have developed our own way of joint working. So behind the scenes of all of this, Aspire Fee is very much the engine room. We do bid development, a strategy and partnership. So we write the bids even for young people. So earlier this year, two, or one Warsaw young person got 3,000 pounds to put on 
around um, debates and we've done that for lots of young people across the region. So we're like the engine room. We've got a media arm called That's All Media that does everything to do with tech competencies. So we can support any community or any initiative with content creation, um, social media management, websites, logos, podcasts, audio creation, um, press releases, blogs, anything like that. That's really useful for some of the young people because they can now come and practice under our wing and maybe we prepare them for other social enterprises to get experiences. And then obviously from that, we also created something called On Point WM with the West Midlands Police and Crime Commissioner. That's a positive news channel sharing positive things that are going on in the region. And behind the scenes, the young people are getting real work experience actually running a newsroom, which is really what it is. So they're learning about the different social media channels. They're learning about putting stories together. They're learning about contacting other people to get information and they're seeing that there's actually a lot of good news in their communities so that's how we've created a machine to support young people that machine of listening is also able to be very targeted so we can do sponsored ads in regions and say to young people look this mental health intervention exists for you in Plec, in wren's nest which is in dudley summerfield park so that capability is not irrelevant it's very relevant that the in in terms of youth engagement that if you can't reach them physically as you can't now with covid we got to know how to get into their phones and, and then into their heads through digital experiences. So on the left-hand side, you're seeing how we do a lot of targeted mental health stuff. On the right-hand side, you're seeing another type of experiential gate to engagement, which is how we create debates, online debates, where because we know that emotion is, is one of the biggest engagers. So we're giving them a platform to talk, vent, etc. And then after that, we can then say, by the way, we've got this intervention, or you talked about jobs, take a look at the jobs here, there and everywhere. So these debates are regional, Sandwell, Dudley, Solly Hall, Birmingham, Wolverhampton. So we've also learned the art of starting to personalize whatever we do. So what's the offering? Well, from listening to young people that are telling us that um, their youth workers and key workers went away in um, around February, March. Um, some very, very quick stories. We had two uh, Asian females. One was 22, one was 25. One, the 22-year-old had to end up in a, in a, um, in, 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 under the care of uh, domestic uh, abuse services because with lockdown came some additional pressures of forced marriage and people started sending WhatsApps of, you know, certain suitors. She definitely wasn't ready. And, and some of the um, oppressive behavior was starting to begin. So she was, again, because we created these avenues and communication channels, she was able to tell us, we were able to help her know what her choices and her rights were. We spent a lot of time helping to kind of combat assumptions, you know what I mean? What's not there? What is there? You know, how can people help you? So us having this channel of engaging with people and growing trust helped us to know some, somebody was going through difficulties through lockdown. That person then in the hostel was telling us all the things that they weren't getting. They weren't getting any mental health support. They had to do their own universal credit kind of help, etc. So that data for us helps us know what to intervene in or how to help prepare young people for those situations. For the other 25-year-old female, she's still at home, same pressure, but she just feels she's able to be a little bit resilient because of the way that she embraces her art form to kind of help her. Um, for some of our young males, we've got one young person who is uh, 18. He got sent down for carrying a knife because he got rushed three times in a month last year. He did his, uh, he did his time. He got released in November. And as a care leaver, he got that lump sum of money kind of, but it wasn't able to fully last. Um, so by February, he was couch surfing. Lockdown then occurred. And again, some of those services that he was, or that we thought would be around and he thought would be around went away. And then in other circumstances, we've got people that were living in assisted accommodation, but things weren't happening. So we started to call in around therapists. Therapists were telling us that they've been told to wait out corona in different areas um, and certain NHS trusts told certain therapists that uh, they just they had to, just need to wait and see um, and some people just followed orders some people weren't happy with that um, and a lot of independent therapists were saying look we, we, we're active we're ready to help people online we just don't know how to work things digitally or we're not used to actually you know being independent we're used to people just you know finding us and coming to us so that's where we came in and then said wait a minute we've got two um bodies that probably want to connect they just don't know how to so as far as you stepped in as the operation room operating room that says well we can loan technology to the therapists and we can teach them how to use 
Zoom, and just for the record, Zoom at a paid level is very secure. So all of our things are paid, but they can use Skype, they can use Zoom, they can use Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams, I don't think is going to be very easy for a lot of young people because of the way it sets up, whereas things like Zoom, providing it's the paid version that's secured, is a little bit faster and user-friendly. And for anyone who's a little bit of a geek, interestingly, the guy that set up Zoom used to work for another video company and even he had to innovate within his own company and now he's bigger than the original company and it's just a real note that sometimes when you start to have empathy for the people it's amazing what you can kind of create even though there might be people that have come before you um so for 14 to 25 year olds we we're then saying look if you need a handset and a, a set of earphones we can supply it to you. And then we've got people that, you know, are runners that can collect things um, after and all of the tech is secured, software enabled, so people can't go on certain sites. It's just for the purpose of their therapy and then um, it gets returned. We're also, from listening, young people said that they wanted something around after hours as well. So a lot of the existing services that have been commissioned, say like Couth, um, et cetera, so most of them finish, well, most of them are counselling mostly but also apparently finish around six to eight and from our working with young people i've worked down in sussex in guernsey all the way up to Roncorn. young people are saying sometimes it's around that midnight time that it kicks off so we our concept is well if we do something between six and twelve where therapists are available obviously it's a pre-booked therapy but if therapists are available more in those hours where a young person doesn't have to miss school or maybe there are more people at home that are asleep so that it's a bit quieter, then this could also be something that we want to track and measure to, to see if it actually improves the, um, the experience of service and engagement. So we just try to personalize things based on what people have told us that they need. And again, with our principal therapists, we're trying to um, make sure that everything's of the highest caliber, as close to NHS services as possible because of the safeguarding standards and, and protecting people, but also allowing for a little versatility on, on, on the terms of, of the citizens, as it were. So from us doing this, young people have really highlighted certain things that what they want is um, when we're looking at resources, culturally appropriate resources that also speak to them. So if we're going to give them any handouts on therapies, et cetera, like it would make sense that it's just not too rigid. And it's, you know, thinking about the diversity of cultures, are they in the text and the con and the, the resources that we provide them? Um, they also uh, value stuff that's not just theory, but helping them get support to move it into action. That's one of the reasons why we're doing some of the sessions in the evening, because if you have a 9 a.m. therapy and it kicks off at 8 um, at night, there's a lot of life that's happened in the day. But if your, your therapy is more closer to the evening time, then maybe there's a chance for you to recall and reuse those, those skills that you've um, uh, acquired. Um, and then there's also a lot of anger in, in, in some of the young people. So there are some that are basically angry at being abandoned, especially through COVID-19. And I think we need to be aware of there might be a I'll teach them kind of backlash and behaviors because we've had young people basically say that, you know, some of their violence is stirred from maybe they just felt like my mom wasn't looking after me as, as much as she could. And if she doesn't care, then what can anyone do to me? So we need to be looking out for some of that, especially as services have stopped. Um, like we say, um, the diversity of practitioners matters in our offering. So we're really trying to put BAME therapists at the forefront and also looking at the diversity of not just speaking therapies, but looking at drama, looking at art, all the things that could still be, get conveyed over video calling. Um, and then basically, yeah, the summary for us, actually, for anyone who's interested, we're looking at wider opportunities, basically to look at the way we do things, we've been told actually lends itself to better youth health engagement because we're experiential first it's very much so people say that we don't see young people as a case but we actually embrace what their lifestyle is and then if there are mental health needs we'll support that but it's more who are you first rather than what's your condition first um, and we're very interested in improving diversity in therapies um, and trying to look at innovation in in some of that structure and we're very interested in research because we spend so much time listening. We've got so many insights. We've just never been allowed in the room to help show uh, people like yourselves what's, cap what's, a what's able to happen 
just because we're, we're not necessarily as big as, as the, the usual suspects. Um, we've got referral pathways. We've got something for 14 to 18 and 18 to 24. But the main thing to recall and remember is that this is more at the low level. Um, so low to probably medium. Young people that are probably, you know, like I say, they've experienced something. Um, they've seen, um, maybe they saw the death of the young person in Smedic. And they, you know, they just feel like something wasn't right because we were seeing that a lot in the in the DMs. Them saying that, oh, it's just weird. Can't can't make sense of it. Um, young people not being sure what's happening with their future, especially with exams. Um, we've even found other situations where the young people that couldn't go through with certain types of terminations or abortions. So that's now caused some other issues because um, statistics are showing that we're expecting a baby boom as well as the result of a lot of lockdown. So there are a lot of like complex issues, but this intervention isn't necessarily for those that are known to this to uh, mental health services. It's just more preventative or young people that whilst they're waiting to get help, then maybe a few sessions to help correct things. Um, uh, is is valuable to them. Um, we're looking at the acceptance and uh, the ACT star uh, therapies, uh, acceptance and commitment. Um, CBT um, is, are most of the ones, and a little. And uh, we've got practitioners that specialise in um, the motivational interviewing as well. Um, and across all of the therapists, we make sure that everybody's accredited. Uh, DBS checks are all done um, and everything to the standards of the NHS as the NHS would do there's just a couple of tweaks where we encourage the young people to look through the database of therapists and then tell us who they like and we'll then facilitate that conversation so they get a tiny bit more choice on who they engage with um, all online um, minimum of six sessions and then we'll see and then we can kind of cover more we've raised a hundred thousand pounds well it's like in the hundred and it's in the mid hundred and um forties right now so there's enough sessions for over a hundred young people now um we've reserved i think 15 for uh early help in warsaw but again we are really interested in more conversations and building upon this because we also want to now look at well family therapy is now coming in so we're getting parents saying that they want to you know they're looking at saint basil's putting their kids in safe um, St. Basil's and little things like that. So yeah, we just want you to know we're here, but also we're able to adapt and be flexible in terms of, we know that there are lots of different organizations that might need something like this. So we're, we're willing to always review the referral sort of pathways. Um, there's, a, there's a link. If you take a look at the MH app, Life proof. You can basically make any referral inquiries there. You can double check and ask, you know, what criteria um, we've got. Um, um, and yeah, any other questions, um, I'm happy to field. But I think, yeah, in summary, 14 to 25, uh, West Midlands wide in terms of this intervention. And it's just designed to help young people start to connect with mental health specialists desensitize them, open relationships and conversations. Um, and this is whilst people are waiting for NHS help. Project lasts for around six months, but I'm making things happen for things to evolve beyond that. Um, I think those are the main points. Thanks, Kit, that's brilliant. Um, yeah, I was. Uh, you've just answered my question. I was gonna say, how long is this particular project available? But you said six months, but I guess you're having already conversations about continuation yeah. of that. I've got one question that's come in. If other people have got a question, please pop them in the chat and we'll cover them. So what's the waiting time from referral to getting onto uh, the programme and getting some therapy? Yeah, so, Technically, it's around three weeks. It will be a lot sooner, but that's I'm giving the worst case scenario. So normally, um, we do a lot of the calls on a Friday. So if somebody emails today, uh, the assessment calls will happen on a Friday. Um, there's normally a form for somebody to um, kind of fill in. So it's all uh, all online kind of thing. And then by the time they've decided, you know, maybe we get them sorry we get them to choose who they like so by the time that's happened and the therapist is able to say about their availability normally it's a three-week um turnaround okay great and can i presume young people themselves can refer in as well yes yeah yeah great um i guess i'll call on your referral pathway so a question that we had when Kuth did their presentation was how do we ensure um this is a safe um 
a, a kind of a environment for young people. So I guess um, your escalation process to uh, local um, safeguarding, yeah. yeah, safeguarding services. Yeah. Um, so uh, there's different kind of caliber um, questions, but like I say, um, in terms of us having a principal um, therapist, it's the same system as the NHS would use. So we will we we're looking at the the highest tier of knowing that about you know each region's crisis teams and working with um, any issues that escalate there. So uh, the principal therapist takes care of that um, tranche of work. Uh, and in terms of technological safety and safeguarding, we've tried to make sure that the devices are protected uh, just to make sure that they can't go on alternative platforms, et cetera. Um, and also we collect them back after so that there's nothing, there's no kind of asset that, you know, they're, they're, they're in charge of that causes extra um, liability. Um, I'm trying to think of any, um, any other parts of your question. No, no, that's probably fine. It's just reassuring that you are linking in with the with the local safeguarding, you know, the mashers front door if you feel that there is a need for. Is there also a link to local uh, CAMS providers as well? So have you had conversations with the local CAMS and where you feel so you kind of been quite clear that this is for young people where it's low to medium kind of level of need that preventative targeted service so probably that pre-CAMS, either positive step um, specialist provision, is there any pathway direct into CAMS so when you feel that those young people need that additional support? Have you got a line into CAMS to do that? Yeah, so we're through Warsaw, um, I, forgot, um, I forgot what the official thing, but we're working with um, Karis, or uh, Karis has um, helped support us and linked in with her uh, leadership team to um, make that known in from the Warsaw Avenue and then in each borough um, more of that's being yeah. done. Great that's good to hear as well so it just gives some reassurance that if you refer young people on that you are working with uh, qualified accredited therapists uh, mm -hmm. providing to that need but if you feel that needs out of scope of your service that you then signpost them to the right and kind of giving that additional uh, need but I guess give some reassurance to young people about you know what they need to to address the issues that they have so that's really good to hear um i didn't catch on your presentation and i was trying to look for it but very um very interested um about the positive news story i think we don't push enough young people's positive engagement and leading on positive news around young people so um i'm sure that people in this um in this teams and listening to it uh, and ourselves would like to promote that but i couldn't see what the radio station what the yeah, web sorry, yeah, it's, it's not radio it's digital first so it is instagram it's on point oh. wm on point wm um and what we've also done is trying to appreciate how each platform works so instagram is the most at the youth end and then on facebook it's a little bit more parent oriented um, and then on Twitter, it's more what we call B2B. So, but the point is, is that, yeah, the content's generated by young people. Um, and uh, the idea is that, you know, we've, we've done almost the first five, six months now. So yeah. we're hoping now to expand it. And, and it's just those little subtle things that I think will build that, that network of, okay, well, if I want to give more and do more in my community, how does that look? Especially if I can't physically go out and about but and then how do I get my voice heard in different spaces? Those little things that you can't do now physically, we, we're trying to now build for, for tomorrow. Yeah, great. That shows my age because like Instagram, uh, I'm still a bit lost in that. But yeah, if you could pop those links in maybe on the chat and we'll send it also around as part of the uh, information. There was one particular question and uh, I think your colleague has answered it, but just for the benefit of the group, do you work with children who are at risk of exclusion um, from education? And and I guess if so, what, what kind of interventions do you do with them and what's oh, the focus? Yeah, so in terms... In in terms of um, this intervention, yeah, it is open to the young people of, of, of that age, as long as it's 14 plus. In terms of those at risk of uh, exclusion in general, we do uh, interventions in behavioral units where we're able to get in, but the rest is what we do in the community and just by proxy because of what we do, either relating to showing young people how to have make money, it attracts the, those types of young people of that 
um, mindset. Um, right now, probably before lockdown, we had uh, a program called Pitch to Teens. Um, and that was basically teaching young people how to become commissioners. So we could go into a behavioral unit, etc. cetera. But we, let's just say we had a topic about jobs and then another topic about, I don't know, self-harm. So rather than the teacher kind of talking to them about it, we'd find 18 local interventions. I trained them separately about how to pitch the young people. And I trained the young people about how to assess and ask questions like Dragon's Den. So now they're thinking more like adults or at least thinking about what do I need and what are my needs? Those providers then get real data from young people about what what their program means to them. So if they think it's a bag of nonsense, they'll tell you. But if they also think it's good or here's where you need to improve, it's a good chance for getting interactions. Because I think a lot of people go into schools and then just speak at people. And all we've done is just tweak one thing and made the young person a commissioner and shown them some real life skills. So that's how we look at the world. Like we reverse engineer where young people want to be and then we create an experience for them to have it. The, the biggest question people need to ask is, can you afford what we're trying to do? Because that's the biggest challenge. Like, you know, if you've got a pound, I'll find the rest. But I need people to, you know, talk to me about what they can and can't do because like good stuff does cost. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's really nice to hear how passionate you feel about the work and how you were led by experiences uh, from young people. So we're hoping that the stuff you do in Walsall, um, you can grow that. And, and I'm hoping that people will take advantage of the opportunities that are there for young people now mm -hmm. and start to connect with you and have a conversation because that's part of it. It's about today is about listening, hearing what's available to young people, promote them to young people, but also uh, for people that are here and thinking about their services and how you can connect with kit uh, and um, aspire for you and have that follow-up conversation about what else you can get involved with yeah. so um, I would invite so all the contact details are there I can't see any further questions so um, I've really enjoyed today kind of hearing about you um, and I'm sure that we will in early help will be working um, with you and in children's services um, I'm hoping that other people will also make that connection um with you and um yeah it'll, it'll be good yeah and um, i think just, the, the, if i can just reiterate i think again you know we write the bids and we put projects together so again it's good for people to see it more as what can you build with us as well so yeah. you know if you can see things let me know i know i know my parts that i need to do i just need to know what people need yeah, great. Thank you, Kit. That that was really good. Um, just for people um, that have been in here, so um, reminder, we will send you an email with the presentation. This session was recorded, will be published on the Safeguarding Board um, website. So if you've got any colleagues um, or any peers that missed this session and you think they would really benefit from hearing it, then they'll be able to re-listen or listen to it at, uh, on the Safeguarding Board, on the Safeguarding Partnership website so again a link of that will be sent out to you so um that just le it leaves me of thanking kit and laura for joining us today and being so informative there's lots of thank yous on the chat um for for doing today's session and we're hoping to continue those conversations so thank you very much um, i I think we've got another Meet and Connect session uh, this Friday. It will be a follow on from the CAM session on Monday where uh, CAMs will be coming to talk to us about their very specialist intervention. So that level three for uh, very high need, uh, complex needs. So if you are interested and you haven't signed up, uh, there is still time to do that. So thank you for everybody who joined us. Thank you to Kit and Laura and speak to you all soon. Thanks for having us. Bye.